issue was released to the public. Less than 500 were struck in the two years they were made. Financing the Civil War created many collectibles. The Confederate States printed over $2 billion worth of paper money. These colorful historic notes were issued in 50 cent to $1,000 denominations. But as the tides of war turned against the South, the value of its paper money declined. When the Confederacy collapsed, so did its paper money. Some people convinced that the South would not rise again, actually used it for wallpaper. The Confederate money became worthless, except to collectors. During the Civil War, all coins were in short supply. People hoarded whatever copper, silver, and gold they could get their hands on. Businesses were forced to issue their own coins. Today, they're called Civil War tokens. Besides being used for purchases and to make change, some tokens advertised a particular store or merchant. Others had patriotic themes. The North printed small denomination notes that came to be called fractional currency. They were issued to relieve the continuing coin shortage. At first, these pieces of paper were deliberately made to resemble postage stamps. They even had perforated edges. Between 1782 and 1866, more than 3,000 banks, railroads, and local governments issued their own paper money. Many of these banks ultimately failed, and the paper currency of the period became known as broken banknotes. To end these kinds of abuse and to provide money for the North to pay for the Civil War, Secretary of the Treasury Salmon P. Chase set up a new system for the federal government to issue its own paper money. And its color was not chosen for beauty, but out of fear. Fear that a new invention, the photographic camera, would help counterfeiters. Because the black and white film of the era could not accurately reproduce anything that was green in color, Chase ordered that money be printed with green ink on the backs of the bills. The greenback was born. Then there's the privately issued money of the 19th century. Gold rushes in Georgia, the Carolinas, California, and Colorado led to the striking of private or territorial gold coins, ingots, and precious metal slugs. One well-known gold coin shows a fanciful depiction of Pikes Peak in Colorado, the destination for many gold seekers. One of the most famous territorial gold coins is this massive issue of the Max Humbert Company, known as a gold slug. Theodore Roosevelt is perhaps best remembered as founder of the Rough Riders and champion of our national park system. But he also earned a prominent place in numismatic history. He personally commissioned one of the country's greatest sculptors, Augustus St. Gaudens, to redesign America's coins. He wanted to see the splendor of classical artistry reflected on our coinage. The result was a $20 gold piece that many consider the most beautiful coin ever minted. A coin that collectors proudly describe merely by mentioning the artist's name, the St. Gaudens. St. Gaudens also designed a $10 gold coin featuring an American Indian, a coin which continues to capture the imagination of collectors everywhere. Other well-known sculptors created magnificent United States coinage. A. A. Weinman crafted America's most beautiful silver coin, the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. The Indian head scent was minted until 1909 and still holds the hearts of collectors. This $5 silver certificate of 1899 depicted the Sioux chief Onapapa. A new design for the nickel was introduced in 1913 reflecting the heritage of the American Indian and the bison. It is considered the most American of all our coins. These buffalo nickels are easily affordable today. The winged head of liberty adorned the mercury dime introduced in 1916. The wings symbolize freedom of thought, an important ideal as America entered World War I. Sculptor Herman McNeil won a nationwide competition to redesign the quarter dollar. However, his design was considered so controversial, 
so daring that it had to be changed the next year. He created a triumphant version of Miss Liberty, triumphant and topless. The Society for the Suppression of Vice was outraged and vigorously protested the coin's design. The mint was forced to drape a coat of chain armor across Miss Liberty's chest. Paper money could spark controversy too. In 1896, a series of banknotes was introduced called the Educational Series. These beautiful notes showed allegorical themes of history, justice, commerce, and science. Most striking was the $5 bill with a beautiful female figure representing electricity. The problem was Miss Electricity was shown partially naked. Protests were lodged and the bill was withdrawn. Sometimes a coin's design was changed for other reasons. In 1883, a new design was introduced for the five cent piece. However, the first of these new nickels did not have the words five cents on them. There was only a large Roman numeral five. A few people took advantage of that oversight. Some of the centless nickels were gold plated and passed off as five dollar gold pieces until the words five cents were added to the coin. One person charged with this fraud was Josh Tatum, but he was never convicted. You see, Tatum couldn't speak, so he never told anyone that the coin he was handing over for payment was anything more than a five cent piece. Tatum merely gave the gold plated nickels to clerks and politely took whatever change he got back, even if it was change for a five dollar coin. Our term to Josh or to trick someone comes from Josh Tatum. We've seen that coins and currency are connected to historical events and people. But what do coins mean to us today? Coins continue to chronicle people and events in our daily lives. The modern Olympics are a good example. In 1984, Los Angeles hosted the Summer Games. It cost a lot of money to conduct the games. And some of the expenses were underwritten by the sale of specially struck coins produced to salute the athletes and the games. Even our American pastime is shown on this recently struck silver dollar. Many people are convinced Nolan Ryan was the model for the coin. A famous pose is depicted on this coin. Millions of people helped renovate the Statue of Liberty by buying these souvenir coins. More than $80 million were raised to restore the symbolic landmark that has welcomed people to America for more than a century. Coins are also a popular way to own precious metals. In 1986, the United States began minting a new series of silver and gold bullion coins, the American Eagle. These coins are available for just a few dollars over their intrinsic value and are a popular way to own bullion. Another metal is gaining popularity as a way to own bullion. Platinum has been called the most precious, precious metal over 20 times scarcer than gold. This shiny gray metal has captured the attention of investors because of its increasing worldwide industrial demand. Platinum jewelry is also becoming fashionable and increasingly popular in many countries. And over 10 countries now produce platinum coins. These coins are available in a wide range of sizes and many have beautiful themes and low miniatures, making them attractive as collector items as well as an inflation hedge in times of economic uncertainty. The leading platinum bullion coins are the Canadian maple leaf and the Australian koala. Nearly everyone is a coin collector of one sort or another. Maybe it's a few old pieces stashed away in a desk drawer or dropped in a jar. Maybe it's a handful of unusual coins and paper money brought back from other countries. It's just a small step from accumulating interesting coins and currency to becoming a true collector. And it's easy to become a collector. First, you need a magnifying glass. It's important to be able to examine the surface of your coins to look for marks, those planned by the designer and those inflicted by being in someone's pocket. Even holding a coin incorrectly can decrease its value since the oils from your skin can damage the surface. 
and coins should never be clean. Clean coins usually lose their value. Contact your local coin dealer with any questions you might have about your coins or for whatever supplies you might need. You'll also need a few books to help you learn about your coins. Price guides and trade publications will keep you informed about the market and other factors that affect the hobby. And parents will be interested to know that experts in child rearing strongly recommend coin collecting for families. Coin collecting teaches children patience and persistence, some of the qualities that are important for success in later life. Auctions are an important way to buy and sell coins and paper money. Major coin auctions are held virtually every month. Collectors, investors, and dealers all eagerly compete for items at these sales. The value of a coin is directly linked to its grade or state of preservation. Private companies called grading services will examine coins for a fee to determine their authenticity and grade. After being graded, the coins can be sonically sealed or encapsulated in special clear plastic holders, nicknamed slabs. Many communities have coin clubs where collectors get together to trade information and share the enjoyment of coin collecting. The world's largest coin club is the American Numismatic Association, a nonprofit educational organization founded more than a century ago and chartered by Congress. Coins and banknotes from the United States and around the world are on public display at the ANA's Money Museum in Colorado Springs. Members of the ANA have free access to the world's largest circulating numismatic library. Each summer, ANA sponsors a convention that's filled with informative meetings and attractive exhibits. Hundreds of dealers and thousands of collectors from around the world attend to buy, sell, and trade different kinds of coins and money. Coin dealers have a trade organization too. The Professional Numismatists Guild is the country's oldest and most prestigious organization of professional coin dealers. PNG members follow a strict code of ethics and are devoted to consumer education and protection. Money has been around in one form or another for nearly 3,000 years, so there's certainly lots to choose from. You can begin with a few coins from your pocket or spend thousands of dollars for a rare coin. Collecting rare coins can be an investment as well as a satisfying hobby. As with all investments, there are no guarantees that any coin will go up in value, but some have appreciated over the years. Investors who take the time to study rarity, grading, and price trends do the best. Coin collecting can be a challenging yet affordable pastime. It's a way of studying history, art, and past civilizations, and each coin is unique in its own way. Where has it traveled? Who might have held it? What do the images and words represent? This is the thrill of collecting, to span time and space, to meet the famous face to face, to view far off places and events all captured forever on a bit of metal or a piece of paper. Money, it's history you can hold in your hands.